Well, you signed a waiver for 300 horsepower. I'm not getting 300 horsepower, bro. I'm getting an air-conditioned oh, no. 230 getting, horsepower car. Three, 300. What's the projected re uh, release date? This is from D. Agar. D mm -hmm. All right, let's get ready, huh? What time are we? Okay, so we're going to record some more on the Swabby thing. What do you think? Yes, I think um, I'm excited still. I mean, every time, it, this is the second video in his series. He said every week he's going to be putting out a little more info. Yeah. I don't, so. I don't know for how long, but... Until it comes out, I don't know. I'm I'm excited still. So some more on this car. It looks pretty cool so far. It does look cool. Um, so this is part two of Robbie giving details. He did a live stream. We were off on our timing because we I don't know why, but anyways, we did see it, and uh, I'm excited. You should be excited too. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. So first, we're gonna show we're gonna talk show him talking a little more about suspension. Um, with chassis we already, or chassis we already covered, but uh, there's a little bit more. We're gonna show that, but then we'll move on to some pretty interesting information. Which I don't know, because I missed the very beginning of the video, so this is all new to me right now. Here we go. Uh, the only differences between front and rear will be the piston shims, the piston, and the spring rates, the top spring and the bottom spring. So the cars have dual rate springs, front and rear, uh, they've got adjustable um, compression and rebound externally, uh, separately, not on the same valve like uh, a lot of the other manufacturers out there. So you can either soften or stiffen your compression individually, or you can add or decrease rebound individually, which will allow your car to, uh, to have different um, attitude uh, throughout either a jump or going through the hoops or what it may be. So if you're going to go to the dunes, you probably stiffen your compression quite a bit. You might want to stiffen your rebound. You go to the desert, you're probably going to soften your compression, you're probably going to stiffen your rebound. Uh, this allows you to do that very easy based on the train that you're going to ride in. But our base setup will be um, will be something that will be above the current models on all vehicles. I'm confident with where we're at that our base setup will be better than the Polaris, Can-Am, Honda, Yamaha, or anybody else that has anything out there. Especially as a base model. These are position sensitive shocks that are very progressive throughout the wheel travel. Okay, so that's a pretty bold... That's bold. a pretty big, uh, bold statement, yeah. That's yeah. some big words. That is some big words. I mean, I feel like if you say them, he knows he has to back it up. That's Robbie Gordon. Yeah, I don't think the, I don't think they're empty words. I think he uh, for sure believes that. I think there's a good chance. Uh, I mean, if you look at the rest of the car and what they're talking about doing with it, the things, you know, that the things are going to be st just standard in this car if it pans out according to what i've seen so far what what components are on the car what it's put together with the way he's built it the things it's made to do then that statement would seem accurate so hopefully yeah pretty interesting stuff more to come for sure the a arms the left and right a arm are the same the upper arms left and right are the same oh, thinking i got a touch screen up there trailing arms are universal left and right. Are they the same as what we did with the Articat? No, they're not. We've made some changes to them. Uh, we've optimized a little bit. And remember, Articat never built a 77 inch wide car. They only built a 64 car. So for sure, we are way different when, than what the production based car is with Articat or Textron. Okay, so a little more information on parts that are kind of universal that, you know, uh, you know, from not just I think it would be beneficial for not just manufacturing, but for uh, for consumers, parts. for yeah. everybody, right? I would think so. Seems like it make the parts easier to come by. Well, it seems like then you, if you carry one thing, chances are typically, unless you're Hefe, you're only breaking one of something at a time. Yeah, as long so, as you're not smacking into trees and stuff. Yeah, so you just bring one thing to have as a spare. You don't have to have two different, and then you could use it on whichever side you bust, Hefe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, there's definitely more interesting, uh, much more interesting information than that coming up. Yeah. All four hubs are interchangeable left and right. Brake discs are vented. All four brake discs are vented. All four wheel bearings. This is something very different than what we did with the Articat Textron. All four wheel bearings and all four wheel bearing housings are interchangeable on all four corners. So if you wanted to carry a spare wheel bearing and hub assembly, you can carry one and use it on the front or the rear of the vehicle. So we could swap this part around. Uh, there's a lot of cool features that we've done in this car to make manufacturing easy, but also make it for the 
dealers to have more parts available so they don't have to have a left or a right or a front or a rear. We've really eliminated a lot of the components and made universal components throughout the whole vehicle. Like, okay, 77 inch wide car. That's the widest car that would be, the widest stock car that would be on the market yet. As you've seen in some of the Articat commercials before, this car is very different than a Polaris or Can-Am. You cannot pick this car up and make the car narrower. You cannot lower the car down and make it narrower. We stay the maximum width all the way through the travel. What that does is when the car goes in the corner and it body rolls, it still stays 77 inches wide. A Polaris and Can-Am go from 72 to probably 65, 62 uh, at full droop, which means when you load it into the corner with where their lateral link bars are, it actually raises the back of the car up. So it sucks that you can't ratchet strap the front end up to fit it into your trailer, but <laughs> yeah, get a bigger trailer. We had that conversation with a few viewers, a few people we know last week after that video came out. They're like, how am I going to fit it in my trailer? I found a way to fit it in, though, well, if you want to buy a pool trailer. We just got to get a rotisserie set up in your trailer and we flip it sideways because it's only 70 inches high. <laughs> anyway, so um, <laughs> <laughs> the car cannot be ratchet strapped and have the front end sucked up to fit in your trailer. Because it stays... Yeah. maximum width 77 inches yeah. like through the through whole the through turns no body roll like just no well no you'd still have body roll but not as but this but the suspension is not going to narrow so it doesn't change the geometry and the tracking of so the, it doesn't go or, when you turn like suck itself up boop, no. and get skinnier in the back end it just stays correct okay so um and then as, as this is not the most important part but again you can't ratchet stop it for your trailer you can't ratchet strap to fit in so your trailer but if get, if, rotisserie, dandy off road rotisserie coming soon. So if uh, if a 77 inch car won't fit in your trailer within a, I don't know, whatever the length is car you buy, whether it's a um, uh, the Razor. four seater, the TT or the two seater, then then you got it. You got to cut gotta your trailer open on the sides and make vents, mm -hmm. just the bottom part that flips out. Okay, but seriously, <laughs> on a more serious note, there actually is a company and I'm not, I don't know how many people know about this, um, that makes an extension you can put on your back door that extends your trailer, I think, up to three feet, I want to say. Yeah, so you end up not having to be up against that counter area or whatever it is that's in, limiting your your width. But basically what it is is you, it's a, I don't know if they install it. I'm not sure what the deal is. Probably they install we'll it. We'll look into but it. But what it is is it's you take off your back door and there's, a frame that goes around the back door that's like I don't know a foot long whatever however length it is put the back door on the or the door back on that and your trailer is now extended by however long bada bing bada boom you have a speed UTV speed we'll side by side right in there <laughs> we'll try to find the link to that and put it on this video yeah. shock absorbers we talked about it we're going to use a speed shock absorber on this car uh, my father and myself, we've been in the shock industry for years. We built our own shocks back in the early 80s, early 90s, 2000, 2010, 2020s. We've been in the shock business for a long time. I think we got a pretty good handle on what we need to do with the shocks. I know more about the suspension, you know, the things he talks about as far as suspension. Like fast, eight to 10 minutes into the full video. Yeah, not this video. The actual we'll put a film. link to the actual, his video. Um, and then like eight to 10 minutes in, you'll see him giving all the details. Yeah, but check this out. This is kind of cool coming up. Check this out real quick. All right, 64 inch car. Yeah, let's talk about 64 inch car. And, and I know there's a market for 64, but when, you know, when we first started with the Articat and, and they launched the 64, the 64 car base car was really what the Articat, um, let's say market share was with their dealers, the trails they were based around. Um, the Western region where I'm from, um, you know, we can run 72 and 77 inches cars. 77 was the rule last year for best on desert and score for maximum widths. And it's also my trophy truck number. So that was a real easy number to say, okay, we're gonna, if we're gonna be better than Polaris and we're gonna be better than Can-Am, let's build the biggest car out there. And we built a 77 inch wide, 120 inch wheelbase four seater uh, with, with 32 inch tall tires as our base tire from the factory. And all LE cars will come with 32 inch tall tires. Dune tune. Yeah, so kind of, you know, coming up, he's gonna cover this in more detail. Um, this car is wide. 
and, and for us for what we do that's perfect because we do and we we like the sand and we need that wide car with that planted feel for yeah. duning we don't do a lot of trails and, the, and we do some trails I would, as a matter of fact i'm kind of jonesing to get back up to the desert. i'm kind of jonesy to get to tamarack which is a wide open sideways trail mm -hmm. where it's a snow park yeah we'll probably see that sooner than we will uh dove springs or jawbone yeah but um but even out there you're you're in trails but you can make it 77 inches you can make I, we had the phone call out there and we happened. did also let me tell you this uh you so the car gets scratched up a little bit on some man's in, what are they called hey, nobody wants to hear this <laughs> we'll be back this one is beadlock wheels uh, that was an easy one to go into brian border um brian thank you for your question uh presentation i was told they weren't coming with them uh, but robbie said in his presentation they were uh, that has been something that we have changed since the sand sport show and that is one of our limited edition items that come with the first 500 vehicles now remember we're going to do a limited edition car now which will be our base cars i wish i was one of the first 500 owners and i could get the, all the specs on the limited edition car what's it going to call oh, some bead locks and stuff yeah cool stuff i don't think we're going to make it but but that's okay um I'm still, I don't care if it's limited edition or not. I am excited to drive it, to feel it, to see it. I don't know, Robbie, just, I told you we're available like mid-May, so I'll send you, I will um, DM you and uh, Morgan my contact info and we'll just hook up in. <laughs> there you go, we'll be back. So in this upcoming video, I think he says. He says that the, the car with the AC, which is my car, um, will be released and that they're looking to release that sealed cabin car summer of 2021 which then tells us that prior to then at some point the other model is released the one that has open with no windshield and it's not sealed cab yeah i think that information is i don't it might be in the full video it might be out there somewhere i just, I just don't remember we just shut off we can tell we hear ac we're like ah. yeah or till we actually see a car <laughs> we'll be back what's the projected re uh, release date this is from D. Agar. D. Agar. Da Agar. Da Agar. Um, da Agar. Da Agar. Da Agar. Sorry. An angry guy. Um, what's the projected... Oh, come on. Work for me. What's the projected re release date? All there, also, will there be HVAC models? Uh, last week, we talked about it when we were designing the car. We designed the original body to be able to have air conditioning, sealed cabin roof. So when we were going off to make our molds, I wanted to make sure the car had style and design. Uh, the open cockpit car, the four-seater like was, was similar to what was shown the Sand Sports last year, will be produced without a windshield, without windows, and it's not a closed cab car. What is our projection date for having a closed cab car? Our projection date is summer of 21 to have a closed cab sealed UTV for the uh, for the dealer market base, just a few weeks ago, it was said the motor was a Z1 snowmobile engine. What changed all of a sudden? The engine was never a Z1 snowmobile engine. Um, obviously, a Z1 snowmobile engine is 1,100 cc's. In the UTV industry, we've got to be a thousand cc's. So this is a 999 cc. Uh, obviously, what changed? It really changed from the beginning. To be honest with you. You know, if you look at my relationship back in the beginning with Polaris and then with Articat, Textron, which we ran the Yamaha motor at Textron, one thing I wanted to make sure of when we built the Speed UTV, that we were never handicapped by a potential engine supplier. I can, I think we heard that rumor too, someone maybe online or something. I also, for some reason, thought it was going to be a three-cylinder. Maybe I think I thought it was going to be a Yamaha because I think that's what's in the other car. There's just a lot of rumors floating around out there, and who knows, you know? They yeah. stir up some stuff sometimes, marketing even does, to kind of get people talking. That's what we did. But, but there's some way more interesting information than that coming up. What is it? If we were to go out and purchase an excellent engine, let's just say the Yamaha, like we have in the double X, excellent engine, but they don't want to give us a 300 horsepower engine. What do we do? We're stuck. Can-Am comes along, they make 300 horsepower and we're stuck behind again. One thing I wanted to do is be able to control our own destiny here in the future. So we went off and, and did all the way, um, jumped all the way off the deep end into the engine platform. Yes, engines is something we've done in our past throughout other forms of motorsports. 
Not too worried about this because we've associated with some very good uh, engineering staffs out there, some very strong companies, and I feel confident about what we're doing with the engine. So it's a 999, two cylinder, um, two injectors per cylinder, single throttle body engine that comes in the speed UTV. Okay, so first of all, don't lose this yet because the information about the engine that's coming up is really cool. What is it? I don't even know. I didn't see this part. All I know, though, he did say that this time it's going to be two-cylinder, two-injector, right? Uh, 999, um, not the Z1 snowmobile 1100cc, because that's not... I'm Get out of my face. What are you doing? But, um, so what's happening? Tell me. You'll see in a minute. Also, this coming up, belt life. This is, this is some interesting information. Um, we're going to turn it off and mash, mash repeat. Turn what off? I'll show you. A, we are currently working directly with a top belt manufacturer to ensure our belts have cutting edge performance and reliability. We will also have an infrared belt temp sensor and we can control the fly-by-wire throttle to manage the belt life. Hopefully you guys understand what that means, but we've got fly-by-wire throttle on this engine. We've got an infrared belt temp sensor. If we see that the belt temp, if the engine ECU sees that the belt temp is exceeding optimum operating temperature, which we've already put some precautions in with fans and cooling and, and, high, and mechanically controlled fans to, to control the temperature, um, it'll also tune down the throttle to keep you at a manageable belt life. Something different than I believe anything has in the industry today, but this is your safety switch. So what do you think? I think that's awesome. I think that um, a lot of people, there are a lot of people out there that give us a hard time about belts. We don't blow a lot, but we blow one or two a year, three. I don't know, we mash, we thrash, repeat, replace belts. About three probably. Probably, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Numbers are numbers. So this will keep your belts, this will basically the throttle, what, what is it? Throttle by wire? Fly by wire? Fly, wire by, fly by wire, so it allows the EC, like you said, ECU controls the, th the throttle, so it'll back off when it sees and it's temperature. So it's monitoring the belt temp, and mm -hmm. so when it sees it getting out of range to something that is a possibility where you would blow a belt, it yeah. knows what the parameters are, then it throttles you down so that you aren't mashing and thrashing so hard. But you, I see what this means. That means you have an option to turn it off so you can blow belts nonstop. Right. We're gonna blow belts. We're we'll gonna be blow back. belts. Click the button, shut off the manager control system on the belt, and you can race this thing and you can manage your own belt temperature as much as you want. Is there a three speed transmission or just high low range? Nate, the transmission will be discussed in another presentation coming in the next few weeks. I promise you we got some very exciting components coming in the speed UTV vehicles stay tuned on that part because we'll cover it right well he will <laughs> yeah he, he'll cover it in a few weeks he said and then yeah we'll just talk about him covering we'll just it. cover him covering it exactly we'll, we'll summarize the cover yeah Summer. we'll, we'll we'll cover him summarizing we'll summarize him covering we'll be back yeah <laughs> so finally the real reason that we're all here right we want to hear about that that engine the motor so this is when he starts getting into it right this is when he talks about what we're here for, I think. Let's, let's watch it then, I need to see. We'll be back. So bore is 98 millimeters, stroke 66. I'll zoom into those numbers for you. If you guys want to screenshot it, you're more than welcome to. Bore 98 millimeter, stroke 66.2 millimeters, number of cylinders, two cylinder, four valve per cylinder, and someone asked last week, and I knew I'd get into it, four valves, uh, or four valves per cylinder and forged pistons. So there's a, a detailed um, look of the engine. A bit more of a detailed look of the engine. What do you think? I mean, seems like they're putting some pretty beefy components. I mean, why? Yeah, forged pistons, that's one thing. Uh, forged crank and pistons uh what? that seems to be leading us to some something interesting some uh, we have some assumptions based on what we've heard so far about what kind of um what kind of stuff's going to be going on with this well, let's just say this um i don't think can't i don't think the other cars come with forged pistons 
Um, and they run quite a bit of boost. So, what? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Stock production horsepower. This is engine horsepower. I want to make sure that we stress this. This isn't if you put it on a chassis dyno. It's not going to make 230 horsepower. This makes 230 horsepower on an engine dyno with 20 pounds of boost at 91, uh, 91 octane fuel. Okay, so... 20 pounds on 91 octane at 230 ho crank horsepower, not wheel horsepower. Yeah. Uh, is a lot, right? I mean... It's quite a bit, yeah, because we are... Mm, we are less horsepower... I mean, I'm sorry. We are less boost, a little bit less horsepower than that, I would say. We're about like 17 pounds of boost, 17, 18? Yes, in that range. Like 200, a little over 200 horsepower? Uh, we're... Yeah, right. At right, right, 91 right. octane. Yes. Okay. So this is kind of interesting. So um, the one thing, so I would, what I would say, here's my, my two cents, my guess, maybe. So two cylinder one, uh, potential more torque because uh, um, bigger bore per cylinder possibly. But the other thing is that if there's more boost at 230 horsepower that there may be more torque than we're used to oh may, that gets you that that's that put you in your seat like yeah so it may be a torquey car we'll see i think it probably will be see torquey. If, see if my see if my 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 uh your, theory is correct your projections speed key we've talked about it time and time again this will be a 300 horsepower 30 pounds of boost 30 what what that's a three zero, he said. Yeah. Pounds of boost. That is freaking, that is insane. That's 300 horsepower. That's the hell key though. Is that what he's calling it still? Yep, hell key. So you get the hell key and that ups you to 300 horsepower, 30 pounds of boost. All right. And we're suggesting E85 fuel. Well, yeah, I mean, something, it's gotta be. Something's got to give. You have to change something. For 30 pounds of boost, 300 horsepower. If you're doing that, then it, you are a race car driver. So you need to re-race fuel. That's just the way it goes. You need a fire suit, race fuel, neck brace. You need a hell key. And you need a Papa Willys. Forge crank and rods? Yes, sir. Question was, uh, forge crank and rods? That question is yes. Turbocharged engine, high performance turbocharged engine. I don't think we can do it any other way without a forge piston or rods. This is kind of interesting, right? Um, currently, not going to go into, into this in too much detail. Our car is just stock, of course, legal. But uh, when you take a car from the factory that's carbon EPA legal already and you modify it, maybe it's not necessarily any longer. Right. Typically, that sometimes, depending on what's done, you could void warranty. You could, There's a lot of things that could happen. So when you take a car and it's manufactured, straight from the manufacturer like onto the dealer sales floor and it's already at this level and it's so it has to be legal because it has to pass all those inspections to be sold in like a state like california for example what did he do magic he did magic yeah that's some pretty big cheese those numbers uh horsepower probably torque boost and to be legal is what i just i mean stop coming out not like you took it somewhere and got it tuned. That's still going to be obviously in warranty because that's his car. I don't know. Mine well, will. not at 300 horsepower. You sign a waiver. Well, you sign a waiver for 300 horsepower. I'm not getting 300 horsepower, bro. I'm getting an air conditioned oh, no. 230 We're horsepower three, car. Three, 300. Notes, all tunes will be carbon EPA compliant. Speed key requires liability release waiver, uh, termination of motor and powertrain warranty. Okay, so you heard it no well you heard it and um oh well i guess that's the price you pay for fun i don't know <laughs> i don't know what to say i'm excited uh, more excited now that i'm watching this but 300 horsepower that sounds ludicrous say goodbye to the warranty is all i can say what say goodbye to the warranty oh yeah is say all goodbye to warranty say. well you know what who really uses their warranty anyways because if you read the fine line details and all that doesn't cover <laughs> <laughs> Same engines in all three vehicles. All three of our first vehicles that we're going to build are going to be turbocharged engines. You know, when we looked at building the Speed brand with a name Speed, 
How do you show up with, uh, with the least amount of horsepower? We couldn't do that. How do we show up with the narrowest car? We couldn't do that. Uh, we tried that once before, so this time here we're going to do it like uh, Lambo and Ferrari, and we're going to bring our best game to the table right from the get-go. They do it. Bam. Show up. Uh, ready to play. Show up or throw up. Yeah, <laughs> show up or throw up. That's exactly. Don't, what that means. don't throw up. You can purchase a speed key at any time you choose to purchase the speed key. But when you plug the speed key into the car, we're going to know when you plug it in. And the question is, does it void warranty? It's not just warranty, it's assumption of risk. We're, we're, we're giving you basically a Ferrari and Lambo and we're cutting you loose with it. We're asking you guys to be smart with it. And that's part of that release is you're assuming that release there and you're assuming responsibility at that point.